Since DJI released the Power 1000, it's become a critical piece of gear for me. It has gone with me everywhere, and when I say everywhere, I mean in 2024, I drove every drivable road in the state of Alaska, and it was with me on every trip, powering everything I needed to power for the filming of documentaries, photography work that I was doing, and just in general, powering my experience of being able to live in, film and photograph some of the most incredible places on the planet here in my home state of Alaska. I've used it to power my Mavic, my Inspire 3. I've used it to keep all my cameras charged. I powered my laptop with it. And probably most importantly, I powered my Starlink, which kept me in communication, even though I was hundreds of miles from anywhere with some sort of communication. And with the release of an expansion battery, a super fast car charger, and a power dongle, I want to show you how I've integrated these into my mobile production station that I built into the back of my 4Runner as I've driven thousands of miles in the state of Alaska and see if this might be something that will fit into your workflow. But first, we need to get out of the office. And just so we're clear, DJI did send me both of these units to test and to keep, but they're not sponsoring or paying for this video in any other way, and all these opinions are my own. Now I do a lot of remote work in Alaska and so having a mobile production rig has become really very essential for everything that I do. So I took the back of my 4Runner and turned it into a mobile production rig and I want to show you some of what I've done here today. I can also make it so that I can sleep in here because when I'm going out to chase the Aurora, which I'll show you in a little bit later in this video, uh, it's nice to have a warm place to sleep. But basically, I built out this back so that I could have a mobile production place where I could set my equipment, have it sitting um, when I prep, and of course having this open here. I built this side, there's a whole bunch of like, well right now there's a bunch of survival gear because it's winter here, and if I go out very far in Alaska, it's nice to have, uh, you know, stuff like shovels and uh, other things I might need to survive in the winter here. But the nice thing too is that I can pull stuff out and set it on here and work on this stuff while I'm still undercover so that if it's light rain or anything like that, I size this so that I can set the Inspire 3 on here. But one of my biggest issues has always been power because obviously out in places like this, uh, there's no power. And that's where keeping things like drone batteries or camera batteries charged, can be a real issue. The DJI 1000, Power Station 1000, was released a little while ago. I did a video on it, and I liked it a lot then. But since then, they've released a few more products that have made this a central piece to pretty much everything I do when I go out and about in Alaska. One of the things that I think DJI missed on the power stations when they put them out was that there was no connectivity built in, but they recently released this DJI dongle, which allows you to do things like hook up the uh, DJI home app and see everything that's happening with your DJI power station right here. So right now I can see I'm outputting 64 watts. It's powering the Starlink up here, which enables me to communicate in places like this but it gives you a whole bunch of other things. You can look at the device info, and I have a expansion battery I'll talk about in just a second. You can look at your energy management. I, it just gives you a whole bunch of settings that you can uh, take care of right directly from your phone. That is super nice, but one of the issues I have is this Power 1000 is good for recharging about six or three pairs of Inspire 3 batteries, and sometimes I need more than that. They recently released the expansion battery, which has a little over 2,000 more watt hours of power, and it connects through the SDC ports. So it plugs straight in here, and then everything you can do straight off the DJI Power 1000. I've been telling my friends to pick up these 1000s because they are amazing, and occasionally when DJI puts them on sale, it's an unbelievable value. One of the things that I've loved about the DJI Power Station 1000 is you can get all these different cables. Now, originally they sent me the Mavic 3 cable and the uh, Air 3 cable, which are these two here. Um, these will fast charge your batteries safely in like 32 minutes, 30 to 32 minutes, depending on the drone and depending on the battery. But you plug them into the SDC ports, and they fast charge those batteries super quick. That has saved me a few times where, you know, I might have gotten somewhere and realized I forgot to charge the batteries or they didn't charge all the way. 
So then I went out and purchased the Inspire 3 recharging cables because these will do the same thing. They will recharge an Inspire 3 battery in like 32 minutes. And the way it works is it fast charges it up to 90% and then slows that charging down so it doesn't damage the battery, but you can recharge batteries super fast. But now with the expansion battery here, I can charge up to 18 Inspire 3 batteries. I can run my Starlink for like two days or I can charge other drone batteries. I mean, it has just changed the game for me as far as power when I'm out and about in places like this. I can run a small space heater in here, which you'll see in a minute when we go looking for the Aurora uh, later tonight. This expansion battery has added so much more power to this that I don't even really, I'm not putting in a second battery system in my car here because, or in my Forerunner because I don't need it. But part of the reason I don't need that is they've also recently released this quick charge system for the car. This comes with cables to connect it directly to your battery with a fuse and everything you need for safety. The way I installed mine is I ran the cables from the engine compartment, the battery, all the way back here so that I can have it near the battery station for when I need to recharge. But cool thing is you can switch it on and then it will start recharging the battery, but it monitors the voltage of your car battery. So it won't discharge your car battery too much. You can set it the voltage that you want to allow this system to draw power from the car down, you know, as far as like 12.8 volts or 13 volts, whatever you want, and then have it set so that it won't pull power off the battery of the car any more than that. So you won't end up with a dead battery, but it also has a cool feature of you can back charge the car battery. So say I was out somewhere where it was really cold and the car battery just got too cold. Not that this has ever happened to me, but I could send power from the DJI power bank back to the car battery to recharge it enough to get it started and get moving again. That is a huge feature that I absolutely love. And the systems I've had before, like I had an inverter back here and stuff, there's no option for that. I basically had to carry around another battery bank that allowed me to jumpstart the car if I needed to. And I had to monitor the car voltage much more closely. With this intelligence system, it's super easy, but it can also recharge the power station at up to a thousand watts, which is super fast. And like that, that is almost as fast as this thing can recharge. You can also set that with the DJI home app and the dongle to be like, how much power do you want it to recharge at? You can set it at, you know, 250 Watts or 300, 400 Watts. You know, if you notice that your car is having maybe a little trouble with all that extra draw on it, you can lower it down and have it recharge slower. Now, one of my favorite things to do here in the winter is go out and film and photograph the Aurora Borealis because it is spectacular. It's an incredible sight to behold. And one of the things that I need during that time is a lot of power because generally I'm trying to keep my car warm in the dead of winter and stay warm while I lay and wait for the Aurora to start to come out. The nice thing is I've got a heater going. I've got the Starlink going so I can watch YouTube videos on my phone and uh, rest and wait and see. The name of the game for the Aurora is you end up just sitting around waiting a lot and waiting for the data to get right and the things to change. But tonight is supposed to be a great night. So I think we're gonna get something good. Oh. The data is looking good and it looks like it's starting. So let's get outside and see what we can see. Well, that was a pretty spectacular night. I hope you enjoyed that footage of the Aurora. 
I'll be honest, this year has been one of the most spectacular Aurora winters of my life in the what are 25 something years that I've lived here. It's just been incredible. Um, I'm hoping that we capture some more before the end of this winter, but it's morning. Got somewhat of a long day ahead, so time to make some coffee and see. I've been super impressed by how well this has been keeping power. Um, it just, it's powered that little heater for most of the night. Like I had it turned down pretty low, but it just, it's keeping stuff going really, really well, which is amazing. And the best part is even with the heater and the coffee maker going right now, we're still drawing well under the 2,400 Watts that this system is capable of putting out. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying or getting value out of this video, then consider subscribing. I go out and test and compare equipment in the most real world conditions I can find here in Alaska where I live, and I give you tips and tutorials on how to use it. There are a couple of things you need to be aware of. One, the SDC ports on this unit, the expansion battery, are only supposed to be used with the charger, like the, the one kilowatt solar or car charger, and the output or connecting to other expansion batteries. You are not supposed to connect them to any of the drone battery chargers. Don't do that. Uh, to the dongle has to be connected to the second SD port, the lower SD port on the main Power 1000. Uh, that's the only place it works. And then of course this has to go into the upper SDC port on the Power 1000 or it doesn't communicate with the expansion battery. So that's a little bit of a bummer that you lose access to basically all the SD, uh, SDC ports, but the fact that you get that much more energy, that much more power based on the same footprint of basically two of these, but you get a whole 30%, 33% more power is invaluable. And then the only other thing you need to be aware of is that you're still limited to the 2400 watts of output power that this system can put out. But then you might be wondering, why would you choose this sort of a system over just putting a 1000, 2000, 3000 watt, out, watt output uh, inverter in your car? Well, one, this doesn't demand that your car is running to power that or that you're pulling power off of your car battery the whole time. You also don't have to install a second battery system, which can be advantageous depending on what you're doing with your car. But the biggest reason for me to do this is that this system will output perfectly stable voltage no matter what is happening. So say the car is running and I'm recharging the system at, you know, four or 500 watts or a thousand watts or whatever, um, this will still be outputting perfectly stable voltage, which is great protection for any electronic equipment you're gonna put in here. Next, you're gonna wanna watch this video right here. I'll see you over there as always. If you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens both Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, DJI, for powering this video. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.